Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tippet for Thursday, the 16th of August, and here we are in the Atlantic, currently uh, fairly quiet in the deep tropics, and if we look up here, we have Tropical Storm Gordon up in the central Atlantic, moving northeastward, could be a threat up here to the Azores, Azores Islands as a tropical storm later, could become a hurricane before then, and not a really significant threat uh, to any land masses, and will be fairly weak when it hits the Azores, but look at this again, a storm developing to the north of the tropics. Again, this El Nino year coming through, showing us where the development regions are for these storms this year, up to the north and to the west in here. And uh, north of 20 north is where we're going to see most of these uh, bomb out, and that is where this one has decided to strengthen. And this will be quickly exiting uh, our region, and we can see it's fairly quiet in here for now, and uh, we'll be watching more waves coming across. The African wave train is very active. We'll have another one that the, the models are trying to develop north east of the Caribbean in 8 to 10 days or so, and we'll be watching that eventually as well. But right now, if there's going to be any kind of threat in the near term, it's going to be from what you can't really tell it is, but it's the remnants of Tropical Depression 7 that came through the Caribbean. And uh, I haven't been able to post properly for the last week due to migrating my website to a new server, uh, but if you've been following what I've been saying on Facebook and uh, the the hints I dropped on the last post when Ernesto was making landfall, which is where we last left off, um, I was talking about this not being a threat in the Caribbean, but possibly becoming an issue in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, and this is still a potential threat here. The reason I flagged this as a potential issue is that we have a very nice mid-level wave structure that is that was known to remain intact with this as it came across. Even though the surface circulation completely died, we have a nice mid-level wave structure in here. Remember, this was the massive inversion V signature over here in the Central Atlantic. This is now over here over Central America. Those inverted V signatures take a while to disintegrate in the flow, and this one is still intact. And we do have a little bit of a surface trough still over here over Central America. And this is moving west northwest and isn't going to get much water time in the near future. But watch what happens if we look at the European Ensemble mean 500 millibar height. This is only two days out here. Notice the wave structure showing up in the western bay of Campeche. And this is starting to move northwest now because we have this trough digging to the Great Lakes, and this is promoting a weakness over the western Gulf of Mexico, which is trying to start drawing this northward. And what's going to basically happen is this wave structure is going to start hugging the very western coastline of the Gulf of Mexico here and start moving northwest and then eventually north. If we go out to day three, you can see it hugging the coast here and moving up uh, just south of the Rio Grande between <clears throat> that and Tampico, Mexico, down here on the central Mexican coastline. And you can see the trough digging in here with Ernest. And if we go out to 96 hours, notice the trough is still here. And uh, this actually starts to try lifting northeastward. And this is about half of the ensemble members. Remember, these colors are showing the spread, the variance in the different ensemble members. Some of them bury this inland. Some of them bring it northeastward towards the Texas-Louisiana coastline. And this is... Um, Going out towards day eight here, let's see, this was this is not day four, this is day five, I'm sorry, we went from day three to day five, moving northeast, and then we go to day eight, and notice how long it's taking this trough to go away here. This is day two, the trough digs in, day three, it's still there, day five, it's still there, and then day eight, you can still see the weakness showing up over the central U.S., and still the potential for something to be milling around down here near the Texas-Louisiana coastline on the model. And, of course, right here in the 500 millibar chart, we can't really see what's going on at the surface. If we look at the GFS uh, for day five, we can see that it tries to develop a little bit of low pressure east of Tampico here. And on this particular run, the 12Z run from this morning, it moves it inland, though it's been inconsistent from run to run on exactly where this goes. Sometimes it brings it north towards uh, Corpus Christi before moving inland. Sometimes it buries it into Mexico like this run. Uh, but it stays near the coastline and tries to develop. And we've had it get uh, some tropical storm-like systems to develop on some of these model runs over the last week or so. And it's been fairly consistent with this idea starting to develop. If we look at the European um, surface map and the colors here are precipitation, this is day day four, 96 hours out. Notice we don't have much going on in the western gulf here. And sorry, my cursor may be a little bit hard to see against these pink colors, but notice this yellow line here is the 500 millibar ISO hips or height line here is showing the trough over the central United States. These blue lines here are the isobars. And you can see right now we have an area of high pressure to the north of the system. And with a setup like this, what we have is we have an upper trough to the northeast 
of a tropical disturbance coming northwestward and uh, the there's some advantages for a tropical system where an upper trough is passing along to the northeast because on the back side of a trough where the upper level flow is northwesterly there's usually upper convergence there which tends to raise pressures at the surface and so what we have is high pressure developing over the central United States not very strong but high pressure nonetheless developing to the north of this bringing winds out of the northeast and aiding convergence here at the tail end of this frontal boundary. Notice the frontal boundary because the precipitation here showing up draped along the North Gulf Coast here and this is a convergence zone that can help spark homegrown type mischief um, at the tail end of these upper troughs and uh, this can eventually at the beginning of a situation like this usually there's a lot of dry air getting thrust into the system from the northeast and from the west off of the continent and thus development may be very um, limited during the first part of this but the nature of the situation is remember this trough is hanging around for a long time which means that such a system down here could sit very close to the coastline uh, for several days and could give it a chance to start winding up a bit if we go out to day five we still don't see much but notice that frontal boundary still here notice the precipitation starting to pick up a little bit near the coast the upper level trough is still sitting here strongly over the southeast united states and then if we go out to day six we still don't see much. There's the frontal boundary. Here's the precipitation off the coast uh, southeast of the Rio Grande. And then watch what happens as we go out to day seven. Notice the massive blow up in precipitation that suddenly occurs on the European in the northwest Gulf of Mexico. It has low pressure center just off the mouth of the Rio Grande here. And uh, the reason this happened is watch watch what happened. The trough over here started moving on to the east and it left a weakness behind, but the main trough started moving away. And so the main low pressure is now off to the east. The frontal boundary has weakened and now all of a sudden the high pressure area has also moved off towards the Carolinas. Remember it was over here. Now it has moved over towards the Carolinas and all of a sudden it opens up the floodgates of tropical moisture because the surface winds are out of the southeast coming into this region of the northwest gulf and the dry air from the northwest is not as much of an issue and all of that convergence blows up into convection that shows up on the European run off of Louisiana and Texas and Mexico. So this is the type of situation that could happen for up to the next week to nine days we could have uh, low pressure trying to fester and bubble and mill around over here in the northwest part of the Gulf of Mexico at the tail end of this trough um, and this frontal boundary and uh, the question will remain whether it tries to sneak inland pretty fast and becomes a non-issue except for rainfall or if it tries to lift northeastward into the northwest Gulf off the Texas coast which would give it more room to develop into a full-blown tropical storm it's hard to tell until we get the system to start creeping up the coastline but the potential is here I've been mentioning for the past week before the model started showing anything and now most of the models are hinting at this even the Canadian now has a storm here by day nine that far away um, that's how long this trough will be hanging around. This pattern is rather stagnant, which again can allow something to sit here. And with that much time, over 30 degrees Celsius waters over here in the Northwest Gulf, something could happen similar to this. So regardless, it's going to be a rain event with some of this rain coming ashore for Texas and northern Mexico, at least possibly Louisiana, along the tail end of this frontal boundary. So a rain event is coming for these folks along the coast and a possible homegrown development along with it. So we'll be watching this area carefully. Not much with it right now, but in a few days could sneak up here and become an issue for this region. So we'll keep an eye on this. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.